really it's him. Just stay. Okay, we're going to <clears throat> start our series titled um, Bible with a Twist. I am Overseer Diane Bailey, and uh, we are going to be talking about the life of King David, the life of King David. So we're going to open up with prayer, and then we're going into our teaching. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to go over your word, Lord, to get a clear understanding. Before we go any further, Lord, we ask you that if we have said or done anything that does not line up with your will and your word, to please forgive us. And in your forgiving of us, Lord, please cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, we just pray right now, Lord, that you use us in this hour. Lord, we submit ourselves unto the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit have his way. Lord, let me not say anything except what is given to me by the Holy Spirit. We thank you that this uh, message will go forth and it will not fall on deaf ears. We thank you. We honor you and we praise you. In your precious son, Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so... The last, I know we skipped last week. Like, um, we didn't, we didn't have Bible with a twist last week. Uh, I had another project that I was doing, um, but we are still on the story about the life of King David. Now, prior to that, we was talking about how David was the youngest of uh, Jesse's uh, children, um, and there was an assignment for one of Jesse's children to go and fight the giant Goliath. And uh, Samuel, the prophet Samuel, he came and he went through every one of Jesse's uh, sons and none of them was the one that God had called to go and fight the giant. So then Samuel asked Jesse, was there another son and he said, yeah, the one that tends to the sheep, which was David. And he called for David to come in. When David come in, of course, David was the one that God had chosen to be to go and fight the giant. Um, as we go along, uh, he, he fought the giant and he, he defeated him. And he was brought to come uh king saul to calm his spirit because he would he would get upset he would have uh, uh anger uh in today's time we would call it anxiety uh we may call it uh a bit of depression maybe some um anger but definitely anxiety and <coughs> So King David was brought to play his harp because one of the things that he done was he played the harp and he played it very well. 
So he came and uh, played the harp. And of course, Saul wanted him to be a part of his court. Now in him being a part of his court, he began to be quite popular because he was going out there uh, really doing his duties and doing his duties well as the chosen one to go and, and, and uh, fight off the giant. So he was very well at what he was doing. And um, so he became quite popular. Uh, his popularity began to grow. And in doing so, Saul became jealous. Um, which is, you know, as we say, Bible with a twist is taking things that happen in the Bible and, and associating it with today's uh, terminology. So he, King Saul became uh, jealous of David and he sought out a way to try to kill him. And no matter what he was trying to do, David never went over his authority. He continued to, uh, even though he knew he was next in line to become king, he never went over uh, King Saul's authority. Uh, he always remained humble. He just always kept doing what he was supposed to do. So we are today going to be looking at So today we're going to be looking at um, the result of his faithfulness. So, okay. And again, today we are uh, having the, the episode Bible with a Twist, which is dealing with King David, dealing with resentment and bitterness. Resentment and bitterness. Now. The problem with resentment and bitterness is when it goes on for a period of time and uh, it began to fester and fester and the more it festered, the, the worse it seemed to be mentally. See, it, it's one thing when you have an issue with someone, but it's another thing when that issue that you have with someone has taken birth over a period of time, it has grown. It's kind of like a baby. When, when a woman is pregnant with a baby and the baby starts out as a very little, you know, seed. And as it go along, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, that's the same thing when you're dealing with resentment and bitterness. It, that, that, that seed begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's why it's so important when, um, when you have some resentment or some bitterness towards someone, that's why it's important to deal with it uh, at that time. Because the longer you think on it, the longer you let it fester on, the bigger it seems to get. It's not really necessarily it gets bigger, but in your mind, it gets bigger. So we are dealing with the issue that King David had dealing with resentment and bitterness. Now, it's one thing to have uh, someone who is like on the outside that has resentment and bitterness, but it's a whole nother story when it's someone that is close to you. So in this case, that person just so happened to be his wife, Michael. Oh. So to kind of give you an understanding about Bible with a twist, Bible with a twist is showing you life through the Bible. There, there has not been a change in how we as mankind think, but for those that accept Christ, we have a second chance through what we call repentance. Uh, David was a man after God's own heart. He was the one looked over when it came to who should fight the giant Goliath but he became the one to bring the giant down. So if you're looking at it from today's term, as we go into about uh, bitterness and resentment, a lot of times the person that you uh, look over, that you think can't do the job and 
come to find out it's the person that can actually do the job can really cause some major jealousy, uh, resentment, bitterness in a person because a lot of times we build up in our head that can't nobody do it better than us. We're the only one that can do this job. Can't nobody do it better than us. Can't nobody teach Bible with a twist but me. Can't nobody else do it. You know, a lot of times we build it up now. That's not the case, but I'm just using that for an example. Um, so because of that, we have to we have to be careful in how we exalt ourselves in that type of thinking. So let's go a little bit further. Those we've already done. So today we are talking about uh, David's first wife, which is Michael. Now you can see here I have a whole list of those that David was married to. Um, but we're going to start off with Michael. Now, in 1 Samuel 14 and 49, it says, Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan and Issue, and Melchishu, and the names of his two daughters. So he had three sons, and he had two daughters. His, the names of his two daughters were, the firstborn was Merab, and the name of the younger was Michael. Now, notice that King David was the youngest of his, uh, his family. Uh, he was the youngest and so was Michael. She was the youngest of her family. So here was two babies that was covered together. All right. Okay, and one of the most effusive display of worship recorded in the Bible, King David danced before the Lord with all his might. And we're going to go into that in just a moment. Uh, the occasion was the return of the Ark of the Covenant of Jerusalem. It was the day of rejoicing as David and all of Israel were bringing up the Ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. So now this was a day to celebrate. It was a happy occasion. Uh, David was rejoicing, and sometimes when you're rejoicing, you're not you're not looking around, you're not thinking about nobody else. You're just in the mood to rejoice. And this was a this was a time to celebrate. But now coming up to this, um, King David, he as I said, King Saul was out to murder him, and on multiple occasions. And one of those occasions, uh, King David's wife, Michael, saved him from being murdered. Now, when she saved him, she lied to her father as if King David was gonna kill her. And believe it or not, that actually opened the door for the enemy to come in because she lied to a person of authority and, and that opened the door for, key, for the enemy to come in. And uh, so we're gonna go a little bit further into that in just a moment. Uh, David had set aside his royal robes and was ran a Lena, a Lena ephod, which is uh, just indicate that he was not naked. Now the ephod that David wore was a garment usually reserved for priests and those ministering before the Lord. As David led the possession of the ark into the city, he humbly laid aside his royal garments and worshiped the Lord in a caustic joy as the representative of God's kingdom of priests. And this is in Exodus 19 and 6. Now, he laid aside his royal garment as he was bringing the, uh, the covenant of the ark into Jerusalem. He laid aside his royal robe and he had the ephod on it. And we're gonna, we're gonna describe the ephod a little bit further, but 
in him doing so, notice I said he laid aside his raw garments. So in other words, he didn't come in like he was all dead. He didn't come in like he was the all to be all. He laid aside that that a uh, royal garment and just had on his plain ephod, which was a garment that was reserved for the priest. Okay, in Exodus 19 and 6, it says, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Now, these are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So that ephod that he had on represented a robe that the priests would wear. And uh, they would wear that when they were speaking to the children of Israel. So this was a, a holy garment. It was a sacred garment that he wore. Uh, the ephod that David wore was made of fine linen and consisted of two pieces covering both the front and the back. Uh, the two pieces were fastened together over the shoulders and held at the waist by a belt of some kind. The ephod worn by the high priest would have been different as it was embroidered with gold and bright colors and somehow bore the Urim and the Thum Thummim by which God directed the people. Now in Exodus 20, 28, verse 6 through 8, it says, and they shall make the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen artistically worked. It shall have two shoulder straps joined as it two edges, and so it shall be joined together. And the intricately woven band of the ephod which is on it shall be of the same workmanship made of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread of fine woven linen. Now this was the priestly, priestly garment. Verse 31, you shall make the robe of the ephod all of blue. There shall be an opening for his head in the middle of it. It shall have a woven binding all around this opening like the opening in a coat of mail so that it does not tear. So for years, they, the story will go as if David was dancing so hard that he danced out of his clothes. He did not dance out of his, his clothes. He removed, he opened his, his uh, raw garment and he had this ephod on. So first off, that, that shows you, you have to be careful of the stories that you hear down through the years because a lot of times, People will tell you, oh, he was so excited. He danced out of his clothes. And you would, you would actually repeat what you heard. I know I've repeated it. I've repeated that he was so excited that he danced out of his clothes, you know, which would indicate that he was naked. But when I went back and studied this, I, was, I found out that he was not. He actually had an ephod that was on, which indicated he was not naked, but he took off that that was raw and he humbled himself in the middle of the street, in the middle of those who worked for him. So in other words, he brought himself to the same level that they were, which if you go back and think, it's the same thing that Jesus Christ does. He brought himself to the same level of those that he was among. He never came out saying, hey, I'm the son of God. I got all power in my hand you know, and, and I'm, I'm the all be all. So even though we may have a position of high esteem, I guess is what the way you can say it, does not mean that we have to uh, <coughs> think that that's it. You know, we, we're it. Nobody else can be higher than us. Nobody else, can, you know, you should always strive for others who are coming up under your leadership to go higher than you. You should always strive for that because that says a lot about your leadership. When those who are coming up under you succeed you and keep going, that says a lot about your leadership, <clears throat> okay? 
go on here. Okay, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, uh, into the city, uh, Michael, who was Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. Now, a lot of people have looked at this story and have said that she despised him because he got out of his clothes. Uh, but me going back to study this, I started to realize that her resentment and bitterness, remember I talked about earlier about that resentment and bitterness uh, of festering over time. It can get bigger and bigger and bigger. She actually had resentment of David prior to him dancing in the street. And we're going to look at that in just a moment. She actually had, he took, David took her back uh, because she had married another guy and David actually took her back from that guy because he had won her based on the agreement him and King Saul had. Remember, I told you guys a couple of weeks ago, back in those times, women did not have uh, the right to decide who they gonna marry. They had, they had to marry whoever their father said they would marry. So that, uh, David had warned her. Now, initially, David was supposed to die in trying to get those foreskins and bring back to King Saul. He was supposed to die, but he survived. And because he survived, he won uh, King Saul's daughter, which was Michael. Now, in doing so, uh, somehow she ended up being married to another person. And we're going to look at that in just a moment here. And David was like, hey, wait a minute. That's my wife. <laughs> you got to send her back home because that's my wife. So in today's time, what that means is a lot of times people get married for the wrong reason. They get married for the wrong reasons. They break up, get back together, break up, get back together. They just toss it for one another. And in doing that, sometimes uh, a person can take that last little bit of control that they may have and pull rank, which is in this case, what happened with uh, David and Michael. My, uh, Michael had went on and married someone else and Dave was like, hey, nope, that's my wife, won her fair and square. I, I got all those four skins, took it back to her father. She belongs to me, sent her back home. And she had to go, she had to go. So I can, I can imagine that that would cause some uh, resentment as well. I can imagine that would cause some resentment as well, <laughs> okay. And uh, okay, and they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering, burnt offering and peace offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to everyone a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. So all the people departed everyone to his house. So they was full and happy, every one of them. Now I'm reading from the King James Version, uh, verse 20. Then David returned to bless his household and Michael, the daughter of Saul came out to meet David and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servant as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. So Michael, who already had some resentment uh, and bitterness towards David because he, he called the court and said, hey, that's my wife, send her back home. She belonged here and she had to go. So she already had some, some, some anger and resentment towards him. And then 
to see him take off his high attire and, and keep showing his low attire in the midst of the people uh, just, just triggered that bitterness that she already had for him. So that's why it's so important that if you have an issue with someone, deal with it. Don't let it fester because it can really, the consequence of it can, can really be life changing. Uh, you're gonna see that in her case. Uh, the, the consequence of it was that uh, she was no longer able to bear children. She was no longer able to bear children. So let's go a little bit further here. Okay, Saul also sent messengers unto David house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, if thou shalt not, that, if thou shalt not save thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michael let David down through a wonder and he went and fled and escaped. Now, the reason I'm going to this is because I want you to see how... Uh, these two originally got together. Originally, he won her through the foreskins of that he he killed and, and brought the foreskins back to Saul. And because of that, uh, Saul had to honor the the um, the agreement he and David had by giving him his youngest daughter because his oldest daughter had already married someone else. So she was off the tape. So he, um, so Saul was, during this time, Saul was trying everything in his power to, to slay David. Because again, David was becoming very popular. Everybody liked David. You know, to them, David was the man, the go-to man when they needed something done. Well, isn't that kind of what happens today? Somebody, somebody can be really good at something because they have gotten, this is an assignment for them from God. And because, because they are following the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the, and the leading of the Holy Spirit, they are effective in it. Everything that they touch is working, working perfect. And, and people that's looking at that from the outside don't necessarily, they can't understand how it's working so well. And so they began to develop jealousy or resentment or bitterness. And then they, they go to trying to find a, a way to destroy that person, maybe, maybe destroy their character, maybe destroy uh, 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 their ministry. You know, they, they try to find a way to destroy. So that's why, you know, we, that's why Paul tells us we will be persecuted for his name's sake. But see, we ought to be rejoicing that. We ought to rejoice because see, if, if they're not trying to destroy us, then that possibly means we're on the same team. So we have to be careful uh, when we are doing work for the Lord. That's why it's so important that we follow the guidance that the Holy Spirit give us. We have to follow. We have to, uh, uh, every assignment that the Lord give us, we have to do it with a cheerful heart and a humble spirit. So that's what David was teaching us when he was dancing through the street in front of everybody that worked for him and he took off his high attire and kept on his low attire. And, and so he put himself in the same category as they was. So he was letting him know, I'm not better than you. We're all here for the same reason. We're here to serve the Lord. We're here to do the work of the Lord. We're here to grow. I'm not, I'm not better than you. Okay. Um, verse 12. So Michael let David down a wonder and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to, to take David, she said he is sick. 
And Saul sent the messengers again to see David saying, bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed with the pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Saul said to Michael, why hast thou deceived me? So and sent away my enemy that he is escaped. And Michael answered Saul and said unto me, let me go, why should I kill thee? So in other words, she was telling her dad, hey, he told me if I didn't let him go, he was going to kill me. So I had to let him go. Well, that moment, that act right there opened the door for the enemy to come in. Now, truth be told, Michael was kind of in a bad place. She was stuck between her dad and David, her husband, that she loved. She did not, that she did love David. And so she was stuck between the two. Now, haven't we always, haven't we been with someone, whether it's a family member, whether it's friends, uh, whatever, maybe it's a relationship where we feel like we're stuck in the middle. So it's like, if I go this way, this person going to be mad. If I go this way, this person going to be mad. So it's like, no matter which way I go, somebody's not going to be happy. Well, let me tell you something. That's life. That's how life is. You know, uh, when we have an assignment from God, somebody's not going to be happy. They're not, somebody's not going to be happy the way you do that assignment. Somebody's not going to be happy how effective you are in that assignment. Somebody's not going to be happy uh, uh, that you're even doing the assignment. So that's why it's important that we learn not to be men pleasers, but be pleasing to God. Not to be men pleaser, but be pleasing to God. All right, let's go a little bit further. Okay. Now, David's wife was horrified at her husband's public dance. But again, not because he was naked, because he wasn't naked. Uh, she watched from the window. Now, remember, she had already started building up some resentment towards him. And because she had already started building up resentment towards him, when he, uh, when he did this act, it just kind of like that was the one that bust the pipe. Okay, and when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. That's the worst place you could have a uh, resentment towards someone. You've let you've let that resentment, that bitterness, got so high and so long in you that it it's the, went from your head to your heart. So in other words, it done went from being a thought to being an emotion. That's when you that's when you're bad off. She was embarrassed at his lack of decorum and felt it was beneath his dignity as king. In a sarcastic rebuke of her husband, Mike accused him of going around half naked in full view of the slave girls of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. Uh, they other translations they've used the word uh, exposed or undressed or shamelessly uncovered. Some of these wording makes it sound as if David was naked, but the contest as we've gone over uh, the fact that he had an ephod on lets us know that he clearly was not naked. Okay. Uh, it should be noted that Michael's contempt for David may have had nothing to do with his public performance. Rather, it could have stemmed from the fact that he had taken her from her husband and reclaimed her as his wife. So remember, they got together because she was given to him by her father because he had he had brought those foreskins. The father asked for 100 foreskins. He brought 200. 
So he was like, I'm, I'm going to bring you double. And, and because of it, uh, the father gave him Michael. Now, whatever happened, she ended up not being with David anymore. And she went and got with another guy. So a lot of times we can start out in a relationship that is not good for us that is not meant for us. And we can get to a point in that relationship where we just feel like we can't take it no more. We gotta leave, we gotta get away from that person. And then we can get away from that person. But because of that soul tie, that means there's, a, there's something that's still connecting us to that person. We keep finding ourselves going back time and time and time again. So in this case, David pulled a rank and said, hey, that's my wife. Send my wife back home. Uh, let's look at 2 Samuel 3, 14 through 16. Uh, it says, so David sent messenger to Ishbosheth, who was one of Saul's sons, saying, give me my wife, Michael, whom I betrothed to myself for a hundred foreskins of the Philistine. And Ishbosheth, Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, from a Paltiel, the son of Laish. Then her husband went along with her to Bahurim, weeping behind her. So Abner said to him, go return, and he returned. So her husband, because she had left David and remarried, and when, when David pulled rank and said, hey, you got to bring her back, uh, because I won her fair and square. She was coming, and the husband coming behind her crying, weeping and crying. He didn't want to lose her. And so then the app, so Abner said to him, go, and he had to leave because David was right. He had won her fair and square. So Whatever the reason for her disgust, the Bible notes that Michael never had any children, which is in 2 Samuel 6 and 23. Uh, this may indicate the judgment from God, basically the consequence, because remember, David was a person who was after God's heart. God loved David. Uh, and David was a person who was going to follow the authority. He was going to do what he was told to do. He wasn't going to step out of the will of God. He worshiped God. He loved God. And, and God loved him. So when she said what she said, she interrupted that worship between David and God. She tried to interrupt that. Now, remember, I told you earlier, because she lied that opened to her father, that opened the door for a a spirit to come in to her. So that's why I'm saying that we have to be careful when we are dealing with people who are who have authority over us. We have to be careful because uh, when you allow the enemy to come in because you have done something that was out of the will of God, the enemy can start causing you to do little things. And, and you may not really be intending to do it, but it's for some reason, you are drawn to do so. Now, as I told you earlier, Michael loved David. She loved David. She loved David to the point that she was willing to go against her own father to keep her father from murdering David. So she had love for David. But even having love for David, when you open the door for the enemy to start playing in your head, he can start check causing you to act out of character. Now, because of the fact that David forced her to come back, she was angry at David, bitter, because he forced her to do something that she really didn't want to do. I like to say that was, <laughs> that was the first step of us women to say, hey, now we want our own control. Be tired of you telling us who we have to be with. We want our own control. <laughs> but anyway, I, that was just a little joke. But uh, so she she had uh, bitterness and resentment towards David to the point 
that it became, it got into her heart. So it, it, it quit being just her thought. It became her emotion. Now, what she said to David about how he was dancing in front of the, the slave women of, of the men that, that worked for him, it, it didn't deter David at all. That little criticism she said didn't deter him at all. It, it's, it amazes me how, uh, how sometimes people, they can have such resentment and bitterness towards you or, or anger towards you or uh, even hatred towards you to the point that they, they try to say little things. You know, I, I believe the younger people call it gaslight. They try to say little things. They try to do little things. To, to hurt you, to make you feel bad or make you feel guilty. But when you know what you're doing is right, when you know what you're doing is for the Lord, you can't, you can't be deterred by their criticism. And so that's what was happening with David. No matter what she was saying, you know, he's like, hey, you ain't bothering me. That's your opinion. You got to live with that. That ain't bothering me. So, in fact, he doubled down telling her that <coughs> he doubled down telling her that it was the Lord he was dancing before, and he was quite willing to abase himself in the Lord's presence. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. And this is in 2 Samuel 6, 21 through 22. David's deep passion and exuberant worship are part of what makes his psalm so relatable. He expressed his adoration of God in a variety of ways through his music, his writing, and in his public display. So he's telling her, hey, you can think whatever you want, you can say whatever you want, but as for me, I'm going to serve the Lord. And I'm not worried about how I look to people. I'm not worried about what people think about me. I'm not worried about what they say about me, but I'm going to serve the Lord. And that's the mentality that we have to have when we have a assignment from God. Because first off, when we have an assignment from God, it's a major assignment. And it's a major honor just to be chosen for that assignment. And, and God still has to see how dedicated you are, how committed you are, how focused you are. Okay, so uh, going back to the scripture here uh, in 22 and 23, it says, so David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. So David was letting Michael know, hey, your daddy didn't give me this position. I earned this position from the Lord. Your, your daddy didn't do this. He might have been the king before me, but my position that I got here came from the Lord. So I'm going, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to show my adoration to the Lord because that's who gave me this. Not your daddy. And then he says, and I will be even more undignified than this and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maid servants of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. So she ended up not having any children because the consequence of her action, she, she didn't just go after her husband. She didn't just go after a mere man. She went after a man who was after God's own heart. So that means a man after God's own heart means that there was such a bond there. And, and she wanted to break that bond because of resentment and bitterness. So the consequence of that, she didn't have uh, any children by David. So all the way up until she died. So there was no uh, uh, attachment. So she didn't have, and back then, uh, women, when they gave birth, they, they generally gave birth to males 
uh, and the males was generally a, a legacy of the father that was left behind. So, <coughs> so that, was a, a, that was a big thing back in those times. So she didn't get to have that experience because she went against one of God's people. So that's why we have to be careful when we have a, a resentment and bitterness, we have to be careful uh, how we allow it to bring us out of character. Because when you go after one of God's people, there's a consequence to that. So we have to be careful in our doing in the midst of our resentment and bitterness. So that's why it's important when, when you first develop an issue for someone, go to that person, deal with that issue. Don't let that issue fester. Don't let that issue grow in you that it until it took, until the point it, it leaves from the mind and goes to the heart. Don't let it get to that point. Because once it gets to that point and you act out of character against that person, if the work that that person is doing is, is, is the work of God, that's a consequence to it. So I have here, uh, <clears throat> life is what you make of it. What do you want to make of your life? Life is what you make of it. What do you want to make of your life? So stay tuned for David marriage to Abigail, which will be next Friday, uh, November the 26th at eight o'clock PM. Uh, if you like to give, you can give by Giveify. And the way to give I give the fire is Change Life Outreach Ministries, 801 Jefferson Street, Clarendon, Arkansas, 72029. Or you can also give by Cash App, which is dollar sign C-L-O-M 2015. That's dollar sign C-L-O-M 2015. Um, so those are the ways that you can give. <clears throat> The way to contact us, if you need to contact us about salvation, you can contact us at Change Life Outreach Ministries at gmail.com. Change Life Outreach Ministries at gmail.com. Um, trying to see if I can. Uh, forward this to try it again. Okay, if you want to give, you can give to change life outreach ministries at gmail.com. Um, <clears throat> also we have as part of our ministry, it's called Safe Haven Ministry, the number three. Uh, this will begin the first week of December. Uh, what this ministry is, is when you join whatever church you may join, if you're coming in as a new convert or need to be rededicated back to Christ, or maybe you just, you've been broken in some type of way. Maybe your spirit has been broken. Maybe your, your, uh, your emotion has been broken. Maybe mentally you've been broken. Whatever the case may be, Safe Haven Ministry. Thank you. Thank you. Safe Haven Ministry, uh, we have a place of refuge that you can come to to help you grow spiritually. It's called Safe Haven Ministry, and it will begin the first week of December. Now, even though you may belong to another ministry, you can come and grow spiritually, mentally, emotionally, get healed, get delivered, and then go back to your ministry. So you're not coming in, you're not leaving your ministry to come to another ministry. You're just coming, it's like a hospital. You're just coming to get healed, delivered, set free, and then you can go back to your ministry. Okay. All right, 
Also, we have the Monroe County Food Pantry. Uh, this, this is where we service Monroe County. It is through our part of the solution, which is also on the Change Life Outreach Ministries. And we give out the first and third week, third Monday of every month. Uh, but we will be giving out, I know I got the wrong date on here. Uh, this was the old one. But we'll, we'll be giving out November the 22nd, I believe, this coming Monday. We will be giving out uh, at 801 Jefferson Street, Clarendon, Arkansas, 72029. This is for the food pantry from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, we are an equal opportunity provider. Also, we have the love and kindness uh, program. That's where we give out supplies through CityServe. We give out uh, household supplies. We give out building supplies. Um, and that is through our love and kindness program. If you would like to watch us on YouTube, how can I get this off? It's the eraser. Now, if you like to watch on YouTube, we do have a YouTube channel. We're always giving out uh, gifts. We have like little contests, I guess you could say. And so whoever get the most subscribers for the month of November, uh, they can re uh, receive one of our uh, uh, entertainment center that we have. Um, so you can go and subscribe on our YouTube channel. And if you get others to go and subscribe, uh, have them to put in a comment that you referred them. So at the end of November, we're gonna count and see who got the most subscribers. Whoever got the most subscribers will win um, our entertainment center. Now, not only do they need to go and subscribe, but they do need to watch the entire one of our teachings that is on there, just one. They need to watch the entire teaching. A lot of our teachings are 20, 30 minutes. Uh, we do have a few that's over an hour long. They, can, they don't have to watch a certain one. They can go watch whichever one they wanna watch as long as they watch the entire one. And the one that they watch, they need to put, uh, this person referred me in the comment of that video. They need to watch the entire one uh, because we don't want to just, we don't want to just uh, get a person, we don't want a person to just uh, come and just subscribe and that's it. We want to all change life is about. It's about helping them to learn something. Uh, the next one is we have our Kingdom Covenant Connection International uh, which is, is not a ministry, it's not a fellowship, it is a covenant connection where we help uh, other individuals who may uh, want to get educated, to get uh, elevated in their ministry. They can come and get educated through our school of ministry. Uh, they can also come and have a covenant connection with us and we can help them on their spiritual journey. Again, it's not a fellowship, it's not a ministry, it is a covenant connection. We do have that, um, that is called Kingdom Covenant Connection International. And the reason we are international is because we uh, are also connected with uh, a ministry in Africa. So we are international, okay. So that's part of our resource. Uh, every week, you can go and watch our Change Life Virtual Ministry. Again, it is on YouTube. Not only is it on YouTube, but you can also find it on uh, our Alta Live app. And that's the address. There's HTTPS semicolon uh, forward slash forward slash or back or slash whatever. 
app.altalive.com, uh, https semicolon slash slash change life virtual ministries dot com. So that is where you can go and you can uh, watch our Christian life development. Now with our Christian life development, uh, this is where we teach you every week how to be victorious over life. Uh, and this is every week we teach you how to be victorious over life. And that is our Christian life development. Uh, a lot of churches call it Sunday school, but we call it Christian life development. The next thing is, and that's at one o'clock, and we have our praise and worship service each Sunday at 2 o'clock p.m. You can also watch it on YouTube or you can go to our altar live and you can watch it. That is our uh, worship service every Sunday at 2 o'clock p.m. For the remaining of this month, our very own regional overseer, Anthony White out of Virginia, will be uh, teaching on uh, thankfulness. And he will be teaching on that for the remaining of this month. So please, ma'am, please, sir, definitely go and uh, watch. We have some great teaching. Uh, you can also visit and subscribe, again, our YouTube channel, making sure that you guys know where to go. Um, it is called Change Life Virtual on YouTube, and you can subscribe. And again, we're always having contests and giveaway. So um, you can go there and you can watch some of our videos that we've already uploaded, or you can wait to watch some of our current videos that we're gonna be uploading. We also have our Thursday night teaching, which is on th every Thursday. Uh, our very own uh, Pastor Felicia Brogy, she is, uh, she's leading right now in our Thursday night teaching. She's doing a great job teaching on uh, being thankful, giving thanks, even giving thanks to God. A lot of times we don't realize even God we need to give thanks on. So again, next week we will be going over uh, David being married to Abigail. Uh, also, just a little keynote before we close out today. Um, when you develop bitterness or, or resentment for someone, whatever the reason may be, don't let it fester. Don't let it fester to the point that uh, it, take, it takes over and causes you to step out of character, step out of who you are, uh, because there's a consequence to that. Because we don't know what God has told that person to do. We don't know how God is leading that person. We don't know. So because we don't know, we have to be careful how we treat God's people. Because as we could tell from Michael, there's a consequence to that. So uh, definitely, if you have any questions or comment, reach out to us. We'll be happy to answer those questions, those comments. Uh, this will be coming on Alter Live here in about maybe 20 minutes. It'll be on Alter Live. You can go back and watch it again and again and again. And I hope that you keep learning something from it. Uh, this was a great story talking about uh, King David and how no matter what someone said, he kept the focus on what God had led him to do. And, and so that, that lets us know, no matter what somebody try to put in our ear, let's stay focused on what God is telling us to do. Because he's the only one we need to be concerned with, nobody else, just God. So at this time, I know we have some individuals on here. Uh, that's okay, you're here. I know we have some individuals on here, so do any of you have a comment or a question before we close out? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is uh, evangelist, uh, pastor in training, Felicia Brogy, and I just want to say that uh, I am 
the founder of Positive Outcomes Ministries. And I am so humbled and grateful that God chose Change Life International Ministries, Change Life uh, Virtual Ministries, Change Life Outreach Ministries, and all of the leadership that God has given to cover me, all of the training. Uh, we have extensive training that we do. Uh, since I've been uh, covered by this ministry, we have received a training of some kind at least every 90 days. We, re we also informal, but we also receive uh, informal training one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, they train you, they cover you, they love on you, they minister to you, they encourage you in the ministries that God gave you. Uh, they just, you know, do everything that leadership is supposed to do. And it's just a humbling feeling to have leadership that is in accordance to God's will. And it's definitely a blessing to be a part of this ministry. And before I was an actual member of the ministry, I was still receiving uh, a covering by them and training by them as well. They ordained me after I went through extensive training in uh, KCCI. And they do everything decent and in order. So I'm just honored to be a part of this. And all of the resources that are available to you guys they make these available because they want everyone to be successful in carrying out the assignment God has given them. And so uh, just like the overseer was saying, we have to remain focused. We have to re uh, remain equipped. And above all, we have to remain thankful. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you for making it. Uh, of course, you can go on uh, Alter Live here in just a few minutes, and you will be able to watch this in its entirety. Um, this is a great teaching. As I said, uh, one of the things is we have to be careful uh, who we develop a relationship with. We have to be careful. Uh, it's Even though David and, and Michael loved each other, they was actually toxic for one another. Um, and, and to the point that Michael developed bitterness towards David. And, and she allowed that bitterness to bring her out of character. And that was a consequence that she ended up suffering because of it. So let's be careful when we develop bitterness or, or, or anger towards someone. Let's not hold on to it. Let's, let's get it out of our heart because if we let it fester, it can really cause us to step out of character. And we don't want to do that. So again, thank you all for allowing us to uh, do Bible with a twist. Uh, I hope that the life lesson that we brought to you today uh, really helped you to understand the importance of not holding on to bitterness and resentment, and also the importance of following uh, the guidance of, of God, even when you know what the outcome is. King, king David already knew that he was supposed to be king, but he stayed the course and followed underneath King Saul, even though he knew he was supposed to be king. But he had, he had to check Michael now. We, we're going to talk in today's term. He had to check Michael and let her know, hey, your father didn't give me nothing. I got this from God. It didn't come from your father. I got this from God. So uh, I, I thought this was a great lesson. I hope you guys learned something. We will be back next week doing Bible with a twist. And we will be talking about King David's second wife, which is Abigail. That's an interesting story as well. Uh, and it, it's a great life lesson in that one too. So please, ma'am, please, sir, come back and and and. You can set in with us here on Zoom uh, and you'll be able to give us your input just like uh, pa as she say pastor in training uh, Felicia was doing. Uh, you can set in with us and give us your input 
uh, you can also ask questions to help you to come into a clearer understanding. So again, thank you. And at this time, if uh, either Elder Tamara or uh, Pastor Felicia would pray us out. Yes, ma'am. Let's bow our heads. God, thank you so much for the opportunity to continue teaching on thankfulness. Uh, this is a month of Thanksgiving traditionally, but we wanna make this more than just a tradition, Lord. We wanna make this a routine. We wanna make this a devotion. We wanna make this part of our everyday. Uh, sometimes more than once a day, we have to thank you for things that you do that sometimes we take for granted, Lord. Lord, thank you so much for Overseer Diane and this wonderful ministry, Change Life, that is doing exactly that, changing lives. And that's from the saints to the sinners. We're all sinners, and even the leaders among us need to be refreshed in our faith and our walk and in dealing with the ministries that you put inside us, as well as the ministries that cover us and the programs that back those. Thank you so much, God, for reminding us of what's most important, focusing on you and what you set us out here to do. Lord, you are our main focus. You are our grace. You are our coverer. You are our teacher. You are our provider. And we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Uh, may he keep you. And I pray that you guys continue to grow strong in the Lord. And um, I will be back next week. If you have any questions before then, you can reach out to myself, um, Ella Tamara, or uh, Pastor in Training, as she say. Uh, Felicia, you can reach out to any of us. If you just need prayer, we have uh, our prayer closet with uh, Pastor Felicia Brogy, uh, we have our prayer. That's every Thursday, 5 o'clock p.m. In, in Zoom. She posts the link on her Facebook page. Uh, I, I'll try to share it to my Facebook page for those that are on my page. Come in here and if you need prayer, you just need to uh, get someone. You need to stand in the gap for someone else. Come in here. Uh, it, it's not a long process. But it really, it really is uh, helpful because no matter how strong we are, sometimes we just need someone to help pray us on through the week, through the rest of the week. So God bless you all. May God keep you and good night.